In this video, we're taking you along to another beautiful Middle Eastern country, Oman. This country is filled with natural, cultural, and architectural attractions. I gotta say, we were truly surprised by its magnificent beauty. This was part of our two-month trip to the Middle East and Africa, a trip that was planned around the 2022 World Cup. Before entering Oman, we visited Bahrain, Dubai, and Qatar. And after Oman, we continued to a few more Arab countries before going to Africa. We post vlogs of every country and now it's Oman's turn. If you enjoyed watching this video, you can support our channel by giving a like and comment. Now, let's jump right in. It's our first day in Oman. We just arrived at the airport with our three travel buddies. Another one of our friends also joined us on the next day. A super traditional Omani restaurant called Al Diafa. We can sit in one of these rooms and eat traditional food. We ordered camel meat cooked in different types of stew. The traditional way of eating stew and rice here is to use our fingers. And some of us were quite serious about embracing this tradition. One thing that really stood out for us in Oman was the architecture. It didn't quite look like the other Arab countries we visited. With its white buildings filled with ornate carved doors and windows, it was quite unique. We next went to the Sultan's Palace to get a closer feel of the architecture. This is the Omani Sultan's Palace over here. This is Mothran Souf, a very local market in Muscat, Oman. Please pardon my puffy eyes. We barely slept the night before since we flew in from Qatar at 3 a.m. right after watching a World Cup game in the stadium. Now let's take a walk around this lovely traditional market together. This view of the Oman Sea is from the balcony of an African coffee place in the corner of the market. We came here for some Ethiopian coffee. Later in this trip, we also visited Ethiopia and had lots more of these authentic experiences. Follow our channel to join our Ethiopian adventure as well.
This is a historical residential area in Moscow. This is the road to Jabal al Akhdar. I love the combination of palm trees with dense mountains. Here we were concerned about our gas, so we stopped at this small village. There's no gas stations anywhere nearby, so we started asking the locals with uh, some broken English and Arabic uh, if they could give us some gas. And this guy accepted to give us some gas. We followed the locals up this driveway to get gas. They saved us from getting stranded. And here we're finally at the top of the village of Jabal Akhtar, observing and experiencing history. The village has lots of alleys and viewpoints to explore. Most of the homes seem deserted, but we also saw lots of kids running around, meaning that many of the homes actually do have residents. After Jabal Akhtar, our next destination was Nizwa, the town of forts and history. We first watched the Japan-Germany match with the locals on the street with a surprising 2-1 victory for Japan. We then visited Jabrin Castle, one of the many forts you can visit in Nizwa. Here is the best place to tell you a bit about the history of Oman. It's dubbed from Persian, so don't mind the mismatch of my voice and lips. Oman is a southern neighbor of Iran, right in the south of the Oman Sea. It has one of the lowest population densities per area of all the countries in the world. It used to be part of the Persian Empire up until the Sassanids and the rise of Islam, at which time it separated. Since then, lots has happened in this country, including being conquered by the Portuguese a time which lots of the historical buildings we see today belong to. After defeating the Portuguese, it became a very great empire, its rule spanning to far lands in East Africa, including Zanzibar, which was actually once the capital of Oman. It was also a British colony for a very short period of time, but now it once again follows a sultan-based ruling system. But regardless of the dictatorship, the last sultan has brought a lot of prosperity and development to the country, making it one of the most attractive places to visit in the Middle East. Let's go see the rooftop. 
if we had visited during daylight, we would see lots of palm trees around us. We're walking in the streets of Nizwa, going towards the famous local market. Even the market gate is designed like a fort to match the theme of the town. This is the entrance of the market. Unfortunately, we couldn't make it before night, so most of the shops have already closed. But even at night, you can still walk around and embrace the feeling of being in the middle of this traditional market. They didn't even need to remove their items from display because it's a super safe country and theft is extremely rare. We started our third day with a visit to the Sultan Ghabus Mosque. It's one of those structures in Muscat that lets you appreciate the magnificent Omani architecture. One of the religious workers of the mosque explained to us that the inside of the mosque has lots of Persian elements. Many of the ornaments were bought directly from Iran, including pieces from Isfahan and Khorasan. Our next destination was visiting the popular natural swimming pools of Oman. The northeastern corner of Oman is filled with these swimming pools that are ideal for cooling down. Each of these pools are between one and a half to three hours away from Muscat. We only had time to visit two, Bima Sinkhole and Wadi Ashab, which we're going to show you next. Our first swimming hole was the Bima Sinkhole. It kind of reminded me of cenotes in Mexico, but at the same time, it had a wildly different type of nature. By the time we made it to Wadi Ashab, it was already close to sunset and we only had time to do a boat ride around the swamp. The local guide who took us was the friendliest person you can imagine. And we were once again impressed by the hospitality and kindness of all many people. This is Wadi Shab. We have to take a boat to get to the place where we can swim. Unfortunately, we don't have time to hike to the swim place, but we decided to do the boat ride anyways.
Iran people drink too much. Yeah, but, but, no. but, but why your country no bar? The government, the problem is with the government. See how beautiful this place is, surrounded with so many flowers. Habibi, come to Oman! <laughs> the next day, we had to leave Oman early in the morning to head back to Qatar for the next World Cup match. We went to the airport lounge to enjoy our last meal in Oman and headed straight to Qatar. In the stadium, we were mostly busy raising awareness about the brutality of the Iranian regime. After Qatar, we continued on to Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, and then we went to Africa. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to join us on all these adventures.